Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game from round 3 of the Superbet Chess Classic. Uh, it's uh, Konstantin Lupulescu versus Anish Giri. Uh, in the previous round Lupulescu lost uh, to Fabi we showed in that game but now comes a game that's um, it's really a masterpiece. It, uh, it features uh, not a single bad move except one. Uh, otherwise, you know, how, how would it be a masterpiece? Or Although there are a few masterpieces... Um, uh, like uh, I don't know if you've seen uh, that game where Alpha Zero played against Alpha Zero. Uh, if you haven't, I will put a link to it in the description. It will be the first thing uh, in the description below. So if you haven't seen a game where Alpha Zero uh, plays a really spectacular opening against itself, uh, do check it out. Uh, but that being said, uh, this game uh, really just a marvel. So uh, let's see what's happening. So Lupulescu opens with C4. Uh, we have e5 by Anish, knight to c3, and now knight to f6. Uh, we have knight to f3 and knight to c6. So the four knights of the English. Uh, we have e3 and bishop to b4 now. Uh, we have queen to c2, uh, just continuing development. Bishop captures on c3, queen captures, and now queen to e7. So giving up the bishop uh, uh, very early on, but uh, as you'll see, this uh, works out uh, quite well for black. We have d4. Uh, knight to e4 now attacking the queen and now uh, if you allow black to get the queen to b4 uh, with check or without check uh, well it has to be with check because these two squares are covered but uh, if you place in like queen b3 queen a3 then black can have a very easy game if he just gets the queen off the board right away so queen to d3 and now e captures on d4 by anish knight captures on d4 and now knight to c5 again harassing the white queen queen to d1 and now knight captures on d4 we have queen captures the pawn is pinned uh, and here uh, Anish just castles. We have bishop to d2, Lupulescu also now ready to castle, and b6 now. And this knight is now a very, very strong piece here. Uh, you could try and chase it away with b4 uh, uh, right away, but then, okay, maybe knight to e6, and then you don't really gain all that much, and maybe, maybe it's a bit too soon. Uh, for example, the queen is under attack, once the queen moves, you can... Uh, do whatever you want bishop to b7 okay you do get this diagonal uh, maybe it can be played maybe it's a bit bit too aggressive so for the moment uh, he just castles you don't want to keep your king in the center of the board too quick uh, too, too long uh, and now bishop to b7 getting the bishop to the, the this very long diagonal and now uh, there is a game uh, where bishop to d2 was played it was a play between Dmitry Yakovenko and Motilev uh, in 2019 the game ended in a draw but here we have f3 by Lupulescu and it is now uh, already as of move 14 that we have a completely new game so let's see how Anish deals with it he plays a5 and I mean who wouldn't uh, preventing b4 and keeping this knight here for forever if black wishes so and now white needs to figure out how to get uh, the rest of his pieces into the game connect the rooks and so on uh, so here uh, while you want to get this pawn to e4 at some point you don't want it to be here on e3 blocking your own dark square bishop uh, if you do it now f5 seems very strong the bishop on e2 is undefended so you can't even capture uh, maybe not not the way to go so here Lupulescu just goes the bishop to d2 uh, we have f5 by Anish now keeping an eye on that uh, e4 square uh, four, four times uh, we have rook 8 to d1 and now d6 we have b3 uh, and now rook 8 to e8 and all of uh, Giri's pieces are now uh, f fully developed uh, we have rook to f2 now with idea of uh, either doubling up on the f file or if needed you can even double up on the e file we have rook to f6 Anish now playing to do some damage here on the king side uh, and bishop to d3 uh, we have queen to f7, now you can shift the queen over to, to h5, then the rook to h6, and then you can start attacking here. Uh, we have rook to e2, and now queen to h5 as planned. And now bishop to e1. Bishop to e1 is a very... Uh, well, a very tricky move uh, because it prevents uh, black's main threat, and that is rook to h6. How, uh, however, rook to h6 might uh, might be a very interesting move because after rook to h6 and bishop to g3, just defending uh, against queen captures on h2, uh, there's this, uh, well, a very, very uh, interesting knight to e4 idea. Uh, point is now you're threatening to remove the defender and then just bring your queen down the board, and if this is captured and this is the best move for white, then you just capture back, and now if the 
the bishop moves then you pick up the rook on e2 so you can't really move the bishop you have to play something rook d to e1 add another defender to the rook now we capture and after queen captures we can play something like rook uh, back to e6 put pressure on this pawn uh, control the e4 square uh, and uh, the, uh, we now play this so it's a little bit of a better position for black whether it's enough it's hard to say uh, but Anish wanted more uh, and he played uh, bishop to e4 uh, right away. So bishop to e4 now saying, uh, okay, you capture my bishop. And if you do, and this is not what happened in the game, because if you do, then captures. And now you don't have a good move. Obviously, the bishop cannot move uh, because we're going to capture the rook. So we have to play something, rook e to d2. But now we capture the bishop here. And now our knight nicely defends the d3 pawn. And our a pawn is ensuring that this knight cannot be kicked away. So this is, uh, this is just, uh, well, this is a winning position for black. So instead, after bishop to e4, we have bishop back to b1 by Lupulescu, and now comes rook to g6 by Anish. Uh, here, going for rook to h6 does not work because g4 is in the position. Now the rook from e2 can guard the h2 square, so you don't have to worry about that. And after captures, well, now the bishop here kind of hangs, and black uh, really has nothing for for. Uh, for this sacrificed uh, piece. So after bishop to b1, we have rook to g6. This is uh, this is the absolute best. Uh, and now comes uh, well, now comes bishop to g3. So what do you play here? Uh, again, uh, the the bishop on e4 cannot be captured. The rook is still hanging on e2. So bishop to g3, uh, and now comes bishop captures on b1. Rook captures on b1, and now knight to e4. Again, uh, Giri uses um, uh, this pin well. Uh, still, the knight cannot be cannot be captured. So rook b to e1, and now comes finally knight captures on g3. Uh, and now before recapturing, there's a move that White has to play because without it, he he will be much worse. And that is queen to d5 with check, aligning yourself with the black queen on the fifth rank. Because now after king to h8 and h captures on g3. Okay, we have rook captures, but now e4. That's the point. Now we cannot capture because the queen hangs on h5. So here uh, you have to decide how, how to go about this. Uh, whether you go something like queen to g6, where you play h6, or you play what was played in the game, and that is queen captures on f3, if you remember the move from the thumbnail. So queen captures on f3. Uh, there are no checkmating threats or anything as the pawn, uh, this pawn is very nicely defended. But now comes queen to f7. Attacking the rook here on e8. Uh, rook to g8. And now of course e captures on f5. This is nicely defended here. And the rook might be uh, well going uh, somewhere very very soon. And now what do you play here? Here Anish played a uh, queen to c6. He wanted to defend his c7 pawn. He's up a pawn, so he wants to make use of that. The problem is uh, defending this is extremely risky. Uh, if you go rook to g5 here, on the other hand, uh, this is, uh, well, it's kind of a forced draw, although it's uh, it's very hard to see that. For example, queen captures on c7. Now we play queen to f4. Defend this, and now just prepare to start checking the white king. Uh, queen captures on b6, let's say now rook h5. And you're going to play queen captures on f a5, and now, of course, if you don't have a draw, you're just lost. White is up too much material. However, queen h2 check, king f1, and now queen to f4 check, and you have a draw by perpetual just bringing the queen back and forth. Uh, problem is, if rook to f2, then we can even win the game because now rook h1 check, king here, and now uh, we can deliver this check. King d1, now we deliver this check, and now we pick up the rook here. King here captures, and now after the king moves, we can even pick up the queen. Uh, we don't have to, but we can. So instead, after e captures on f5, queen to c6 was played. Uh, even though rook to g5 is a very solid hold. Uh, Giri wants more than a draw. Uh, so rook to f2 now. Uh, and now comes, uh, well, uh, it's hard to uh, hard to figure out what you play here. Uh, but it's uh, it's such a such a crazy position. Uh, the, uh, 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 Giri does not have any any great moves here. He played queen to c5, and uh, this move comes with a with a very neat trick. Uh, it kind of prevents uh, white from pushing uh, f6 and prevents most of the things that white can do. So this is a great position for you to pause the video and try to find basically the only move that uh, allows white to win the game. Uh, while I give you a couple of seconds.
So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on not pushing this pawn or or playing rook to e8. Those two are incredibly good looking moves, but uh, that's not uh, how you do it. The problem is uh, Giri stopped both of these threats with queen to c5. The idea is now if you if you play f6, uh, now the point is just g captures on f6. And after queen captures on f6, you can bring this rook back and there is nothing here. There is uh, there, there's no checkmate. There is no there's no nothing. Uh, so instead, uh, uh, after this queen to c5, uh, you guys might have considered rook to e8. It seems great because we can just deliver checkmate here. Uh, unfortunately, you fall for a cheapo, and that's rook captures on g2. The rook uh, is pinned, so you have to capture with the king. And now, uh, well, you don't have to capture uh, and allow something like queen to c6 check, and then you pick up the rook here. So uh, white might even avoid this by playing king to h1, but now you just have rook to h2 check. And now you're just going to repeat, or white will capture and then we capture this and then it's a, it's just a draw. So for those of you who found the actual winning move, that is rook to e7, and really congratulations as you are an excellent, uh, you know, chooser of right ideas, uh, because now there really isn't anything black can do here. Uh, Giri, of course, tried. Giri played queen to d4, and it's a, uh, it's, a, it's a very solid attempt, but it again doesn't work. So once again, uh, feel free to pause the video and now really win the game for white while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who decided that now f6 is winning, unfortunately it's not, but we are going to show it as it's uh, it's a fun line. Uh, f6 here doesn't work because of the same idea rook captures on g2. And now, uh, again, we don't have anything. If we move the king, then then rook captures on f2, and then you can't uh, do, do all that much. Uh, and if you capture, then g captures on f6 comes with check. And uh, that's all that black needs, king f1. And now we're just going to have a nice perpetual here. Or, or even better, you, you have to block with the rook, queen d3. And now you have to block with uh, with uh, this rook. Because if you block with this rook, then queen to h3 and you're getting checkmated. So you have to block with this rook. And now again, we're just going to repeat this and uh, have a nice uh, drop by perpetual checking. However, for those of you who found rook to e8 now, uh, that's uh, really just uh, amazing. Because uh, here, uh, to, to achieve such a brilliant brilliant masterpiece of white had to play uh, only the strongest moves in every possible position and this is incredible of course that's what it takes to take down a guy like uh, like Giri uh, but it's incredible how he was able to do that uh, now the queen left the c5 square you no longer have that trick if you remember uh, as long as the queen was on c5 rook to e8 was not an option because then you could sacrifice rook captures king captures and then queen to c6 check uh, picks up the rook here, but now the queen is on c5, and such uh, such things are no longer possible. So here. Uh, you don't have a move if you capture of course this is checkmate so instead rook captures on g2 check was played but there's no good follow-up king captures on g2 now queen to g4 check king h2 queen h4 check king g2 queen g4 check and now king to f1 uh, here, the, if you go queen to d1, uh, which is of course possible, just rook e1. And if uh, queen to d3, king g2, and no more checks are available, or rather no more, uh, uh, you know, good checks. So after king f1, queen to h3 check was played, king to e1, and now comes uh, queen to c3 with check. Rook to d2 blocking this, and it was in this position on move 39 that Anish Giri resigned the game, and uh, a, a wonderful victory for Konstantin Lupulescu, who buns back very nicely after his loss to Fabiano Caruana in, in round 2. So really impressive game. Uh, like I said, uh, you, you're welcome to crunch the numbers on this one on your own engines. You'll see that Lupulescu played just a perfect game. It's uh, just uh, uh, b both him and uh, and uh, Deak are just uh, you know representing their their country very well in this tournament, uh, giving the the candidates really a, a run for their money. Uh, so yeah, uh, like I said, this is the end uh, of, of um, uh, round three. All of the other games ended in a draw. This one was the only decisive one. And after three rounds, the leaders are Fabiana Coruana and uh, Deak. Uh, hope I'm pronouncing it correctly now. So we'll see what happens. Uh, it's still very early on in the tournament, but this will be a very interesting one. Uh, and for those of you who are wondering why do you resign? Uh, well, there's just nothing to do here. You're down a rook and you don't have anything to show for it. You can do some more checks, but it's very easy for... Uh, uh, for for white to hide from all the checks king to c2 and that's it there are no more no more useful checks so yeah uh that's the game i hope you guys enjoyed it like i said after rook to d2 giri resigned uh and that's uh, all there is
Uh, I would like to thank Shane Macy, uh, Zach Corsell, uh, Frank Clarius, Gregoire Schiller, and Michael Hildebrand for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage uh, of the Morphe Saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens uh, in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your uh, day.